All right, so now I'm going to talk about tangent bundles uh, and vector fields. Okay, so given a manifold M, right, uh, I defined the tangent bundle. is denoted by Tm, right, as the set of all tangent vectors to M. Okay, uh, and one way to sort of think about this is that this is the union over base points x and m of the tangent spaces at x uh, to m, okay? So, uh, so since each uh, tangent vector in the tangent bundle is in only, uh, is in one and only one tangent space, Um, TXM, right? It follows that M is a quotient of TM. With a natural projection. So pi is a map from Tm to M, right? Where uh, given <coughs> that tangent vector is in a specific tangent space, Txm, I map it to the base point x, okay? Um, all right, so, so then there's a natural projection. It's like of the tangent vector. Uh, to the base point, if you will, it's like of that tangent vector. Okay, and then there is a manifold structure. Sort of a natural manifold structure. <coughs> On Tm. Okay. Uh, and it's induced, as you might expect, by the manifold structure in M. Okay, so given some chart of M, given a chart, okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this curve and map it to um, the base, the coordinates of the base point. D is the dimension of the base manifold M. And then um, and then I'm going to take the um, essentially the directional derivatives of the components uh, of the components of the coordinate chart, right? So you can see uh, okay. All right, and I can do that because of course it's like the individual components, it's like of the coordinates are really just scalar value functions. So the, uh, <coughs> the tangent vector acts, it's like by directional derivative, it's like on that scalar value function. Okay, so this is a chart of Tm, right, with domain, which is given by uh, the pre-image of the, uh, the set U, right? So again, it's like you have a projection that's right from the tangent space, it's like to the base points. Uh, and so this uh, chart, it's like on uh, the tangent bundle is defined, it's like on uh, the union of the tangent spaces uh, of points X, it's like in the set U, which uh, the original coordinate chart was defined on. Okay, so um, yeah, so anyway, so endowed it's like with uh, this atlas, 
which is induced by charts of this form, right? Then uh, you endow this uh, set. It's like with a manifold structure, and with that manifold structure, we call it the tangent bundle. Okay. All right. So so this is uh, this is the notion of the tangent bundle and how the coordinate chart that's like uh, on the tangent bundle is induced by the coordinate chart on the base manifold M. Okay, uh, and then it's sort of easy to convince yourself uh, from that that the uh, tangent bundle uh, has uh, twice the dimension it's like at the base manifold, or you also from this you can also sort of see that um, the um, the individual tangent spaces right have the dimension of the base manifold. Okay, right. Okay. So, so once you have this notion of tangent bundle, we can start talking about the notion of vector fields on the manifold, right? And uh, as you might expect, um, the idea of a vector field is that you have a map from the base manifold uh, M to uh, the tangent bundle um, with the property that um, it is, um, it is, um, it covers the identity map. Okay, so what I mean by that so, um, so a vector field. So I'll explain that. So, so let's say a vector field C on the manifold M is a smooth function from M to the tangent bundle. Okay. And then it assigns, so I can do it this way, which assigns a tangent vector uh, to each point x on m, a tangent vector in the tangent space at x uh, to m, right? So that's one way to think about it is that I sort of impose the condition that not only is this map something which maps the manifold to TM, but in particular it's like it maps uh, a point X, it's like to a vector CX, it's like which is in tangent space at X to M. Okay, so that's one way to think about it. Another way to think about it is that you have a manifold M, you have this lift to TM, it's like by this uh, vector field, right? And you recall it's like that there's this notion of a canonical projection. <coughs> from TM, it's like 2M, right, which is just M. And this condition here is just saying that this is the identity, all right? So this is the sense in which I said that the map from M to TM covers the identity map of you when you have the projection, right? So, so if you have this map, it's like to TM and you compose it or the projection, you can have a map from M to M and you want this map to be the identity map, okay? So, so this statement here is saying that you assign uh, a tangent vector at the point x, it's like to this point x, right? You map point x, it's like to a tangent vector at x, right? It's equivalent to saying that, again, this map from M to TM covers the identity map, okay? So, sort of covers the identity map. Okay, yeah, so those two things are equivalent. <coughs> okay, so given a vector field C on M, right, and a smooth uh, real value function. F, right, which is again this set of smooth real value functions. It's like, uh, you know, on M, right, on some neighborhood, right, we let, uh, well, actually, not in the neighborhood now because there's no sub X here, okay? Because CF denote 
the real value function. on f on m defined by the following okay so because cf at the point x right is just defined to be right because c sub x right is the valuation of the vector field at the point x that's just now a tangent vector uh, we can have that uh, act on f right because uh, that's just a map again from f sub x of m it's like to the rails right so that's what's happening here and this is true for all x and m and then um, the same way that we we talked about having a linear space structure and tangent spaces uh, you can uh, you can extend that to a linear space structure on tangent vectors uh, so on vector fields okay all right, so let's see how you do that. So we want to define sort of uh, addition and scalar multiplication. Well, not really scalar by a function. So we want to define addition of vector fields. multiplication by f scalar functions okay uh, so if you have f <coughs> times cos c at the point x right that's just defined to be as you might expect, sort of this pointwise thing, you have f at x, it's like multiplied by c at x. Okay, uh, and then if you want to do addition, you have, uh, it's like, um, if you want to add two vectors, it's like at the point, you just define them by adding the, um, <coughs> well, you just sort of, uh, sort of do this pointwise, if you will, right? You define this addition pointwise. Uh, and then on the pointwise case, it's like you have just the tangent space, the tangent space we already talked about the linear space structure for, uh, and you want to do this for all x on the manifold, okay? So, so that's sort of the obvious thing. And you can check that, you know, it's like these things will still be smooth. It's like, and then uh, you can, um, you can refer to the space of vector fields endowed with this notion of addition and multiplication by scalar functions uh, by the following. So we denote the set of smooth vector fields with uh, sort of these two operations. Okay, uh, and then um, you can check if you will. It's like that if you have a um, if you have a chart. It's like on um, on the manifold. It's like that gives you a basis. It's like for. Uh, tangent vectors, I mean, for vector fields as well. Okay. Um, so, so that the way you do this is as follows. So you, let's say that you have a chart. On the manifold M. Okay. Then I'm going to define the i coordinate vector field. Right. I will define, I'll write it down in a second, then I'll try to give you sort of an intuitive notion of where this is coming from. Okay, so uh, EI of F acting on X, right? 
is defined to be the ith derivative of f composed with, uh, it's like phi i, phi inverse, it's like phi x. <coughs> and so this is just the derivative of f composed with phi inverse at the point cx times d. Um, all right, so this is sort of relating it to the usual notion of a directional direct derivative on a vector space, right? And you can do this because it's like if you have point x in the manifold, you apply the coordinate chart to it, that gives you a point in Rn. And again, it's like f composed with uh, phi inverse, it's like it is a function, it's like from Rn to R. And then this is, of course, just the usual uh, sort of basis element, it's like in Rn, okay? So, so the point is that this thing is related to each other. Um, so let me sort of maybe give you an intuitive idea of where, uh, what this is really sort of uh, giving you, all right? Okay, so I think the picture, it's like, which is perhaps most helpful is the following. So you have a manifold M, you have the chart to, to sort of Rn, okay? And of course on Rn, it's like you have the, uh, the coordinate lines. Maybe let me try to draw it with a different color. So let's see, I have the blue coordinate lines here. All right, and then you can sort of map them back, right? They might correspond to lines which look like this, right? And then you have, say, the red coordinate lines, which are the vertical ones. <laughs> so these are obviously, it's like just lines where one of the components uh, is constant, right? And then intuitively, it's like what this vector is sort of looking like, right? Um, so as, as we sort of uh, talked about, right, one way of thinking about tangent vectors abstractly is to relate them to curves, uh, and then to think of the tangent vectors as being morally, it's like the derivative of the curve, it's like in uh, the parameter, right? So, um, so if you have a point here, for example, it's like then this might be one of the tangent vectors, Right, and then it's just a tangent vector to the curve, which is defined by these constant coordinate lines, right? Pulled back, it's like to the manifold, right? And so these uh, EIs in some sense are, what you do, it's like where you take these constant coordinate lines, you pull it back to the manifold, these gives you curves on the manifold, and then you look at the tangent vectors associated with that, right? So that's morally what this is, this is all about, okay? Um, and then, uh, as you might expect, it's like you can do this, it's like for any point that's like on the manifold, not just uh, the base point, right? So, so you can convince yourself that these tangent vectors, right, um, which are generated by, again, looking at uh, the sort of the, if you will, the curves, it's like which um, are associated with these constant uh, coordinate lines, right? This then forms a basis um, for, um, for the tangent uh, space, okay, uh, at every point, uh, and in particular the tangent bundle, okay. Um, so, um, right. So, um, <coughs> point, if you will, is that these EIs, right, sort of form a basis for TM, and then, uh, so this allows you to, to expand uh, um, any vector field, right, uh, in this basis. the following. Okay, that any uh, vector field C is given by some 
li linear combination of these basis vectors EI, but you might ask what are the coefficients. So it turns out that the coefficients have a very nice form. Okay, so the ni nice form of the coefficients are that they really are uh, this vector acting on the coordinate uh, components, right? So uh, phi i here really is the i component. It's like of the coordinate chart. That's a scalar value function I can have. It's like the uh, the vector field act on that, right, to give me a real number. So this is some linear combination. It's like of the basis vectors uh, with this. Okay. So so this is kind of nice. Uh, and uh, you know, it's like this is in some sense just a, um, a generalization of what we had. It's like at a pointwise level. So this sort of generalizes sort of the pointwise representation. Okay, to the entire uh, tangent bundle. Well, the entire domain of definition of the vector field. Actually, the domain definition of the coordinate chart, right? <coughs> All right. So anyway, um, yeah. So so that um, you know, again, this is perhaps the best picture to keep in mind. It's like that you have a coordinate chart. It gives you a map to R n. You look at the coordinate lines associated with that. You pull it back. It's like to the manifold, and you look at the tangent vectors, if you will. It's like to those curves, and then this gives you a basis. It's like for the tangent space. Okay. So hopefully that's uh, a helpful picture to keep in mind. All right. So let me just stop here for now.